As I read this scripture the last few weeks, and as I really studied it this last week, this is an absolutely wonderful passage that Jesus of Nazareth is talking about to our souls. Uh, it is John 7, 37 to 39. Fairly short verses, but just tremendous meaning in these verses. Then on the most important day of the feast, the last day, Jesus stood and shouted out to the crowds, All you thirsty ones, come to me. Come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. Do you really want the eternal water of Jesus, the joy of Jesus flowing out from your life? Are you really motivated to have this happen? I have a student, uh, her husband Adam Van Dong has a wonderful new restaurant in Topeka. It's called the White Linen. It's in the old, uh, old, old building at 6th and Kansas Avenue, right across from my lawyer's office. <laughs> uh, just about two buildings down from the corner of 6th and Kansas Avenue in Topeka on the west side. And Adam is getting a really successful restaurant. It's very expensive to go there. Save your quarters, dimes, and nickels, because it's expensive to eat there. I took my lawyer there one time, and I said, get something good. And he got the cheapest thing, and I got the best steak they had. I still dream about that steak. <laughs> Adam's a great cook. But Casey, or Cassie, uh, I always called her Casey, K-A-S-I-E, is now a student at Washburn University. She was one of my best students in Highland Community College. And I know she's going to excel in law school. Uh, studying law is one of the most difficult things a person does other than becoming a medical doctor. And uh, I know Casey will excel because you don't have to be smart to be a lawyer, but you have to read a lot and memorize a lot, a lot of cases. Casey really, really wants to be an attorney at law. And I know she's going to be successful. As a matter of fact, I'm going to text her sometime this week and say, listen, I want you to go to Horton First Christian Church, YouTube, I talked about you in the morning worship service. And I know this will keep her motivated because, you know, you study law for year after year, week after week, month after month, day after day. You can really get exhausted. But she really, really wants. And so do you really, do you and I really want to be self-actualized like Casey Van Dong? Do we, are we really, really motivated to have the water of life, the joy of the water of life flowing out of us? Uh, There's really some important words in here. All you thirsty ones, are you thirsty for God? Are you really thirsty? Jesus was shouting out to the crowds because he wanted to get in touch with the people that really, really were motivated to have God in their lives. He said, believe in me. Use this motivation to believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you. This word can also be translated explode out from you. I just love to see waterfalls cascading down mountains, exploding, streams exploding down 
beautiful hills like Yosemite. There's a river in the Ozark Mountains where this beautiful waterfall comes pouring out, crystal clear water. Do we want the crystal clear water of God's love bursting out of our lives from within us, you know, exploding out of our lives, out of our innermost being? It's sort of like the children's message I said today, you know, in a freezing condition that goose had her feathers around that baby kitten and warmth was exploding out of her to keep that little kitten alive but also it's a little puppy really I said it wrong and that little puppy was keeping her alive too and you know when when we have this out of our innermost being this water of joy this water of healing this water of life that Jesus is talking about here it refreshes our own souls as we give out this water because it's, it's an endless flow. Jesus wants an endless flow of love and healing and compassion to flow out of our lives to those around us. The Spirit of God is already in you. Now it's you and I every day saying, God, I want you in my life. I want you to explode. I want your love to explode out of me, your forgiveness to explode out of me. You gotta really, really, really want it. But Jesus is saying, if you really are thirsty, take a long drink of me every single day throughout the day, and the living water that I have will be flowing out of you in an endless stream. Because God is endless, God's love is infinite, and God's love will always be flowing out of you. You gotta really, really want it. Be like Casey, really, really want it. And Jesus was prophesying, John explains, about the Holy Spirit that believers were being prepared to receive. But the Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out upon them because Jesus had not yet been unveiled in his full splendor. Now we know that later, Peter, James, and John, and the Mount of Transfiguration, they begin to see, and notice I just say the word begin, they begin to see when Jesus' whole body and his clothing began radiating with light, and in that radiating light, he talked with Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, but that was only the beginning. And Jesus told Peter, James, and John, don't tell anybody about this until I've risen from the dead. I'm going to die, I'm going to be in the grave three days, and then I'm going to be risen from the dead. Then you can tell people about this. But until I raise from the dead, don't tell anybody about it because they won't understand. you starting to understand because you see me up here on this mountain, and you've seen the glory of God. But when I rise from the dead, then you will fully understand. And you will see the, the glory of God flow from within you. This is a promise from Jesus. When I took my daughter out of the ghetto in St. Louis, I said, Elizabeth, I want to give you a chance for recovery and to have God's love flowing out of you. And for the first few weeks, she attended meetings, she attended church, she attended th things and hung out with people that were healing. She got a wonderful job at Jackson Heights working with two other Christian people, Jackson Heights High School and grade school. And then gradually she began to move away from this water of life. And I watched her slowly die my daughter died long before her body died. She died to having God and his innermost being flowing out of her life. And so, you know, many people around us are like Elizabeth. They're dying and they're getting more depressed. Joy has left their life a long time ago. And I'm so happy for Amy's joy and Tony's joy and the wedding here coming up in September. But so many people are strangers to joy, 
strangers to healing and forgiveness and, and blessing in their own lives. And Jesus wants us to be full of his love, full of his joy, and full of his power. And God can take all your, your sadness and your depression and everything and turn it into joy. I'm, I'm beginning an eight-week series on how the words of Jesus can help us with different mental health disorders. And it's true. This is not just some pie in the sky by and by. We don't, we're just not Christians to have experience of heaven in the life to come. You and I can experience freedom from so many things that our friends and neighbors and our family members are not experiencing. We can have this innermost feeling of joy and forgiveness and peace that passes understanding and, and wonderful things flowing out of our lives if we get in touch with Jesus every single day. God will take our sadness and turn it into joy. And you know, it'll be not overwork. We don't have to work at being a Christian anymore. It can be overflow, overflow. God has abundant life waiting for us, but we got to really, really, really want it. And uh, those of you listening on YouTube, it's a really miserable day. And everybody here had to drive through slush on the roads to get here. Our parking lot is not fully uh, being treated, but God bless our custodian, all the sidewalks are safe. <laughs> and, and we had real good reasons not to come to church today, not to receive communion, not to study God's word, not to sing praises of God, but everyone here has made a decision, and I hope everyone you listening to these words, you make a decision to really, really, really want God in your life. This is a promise. This is also a direct command from Jesus. You know, being a retired colonel, I recognize direct commands. And Jesus says, if you're thirsty, I command you to come to me. If you're hungry for God, if you're struggling through life, I give you a loving command. If you really believe in me and you really, really want it, Living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being. And that's not only a command. That's a blessing, just waiting to be received. You know, I love Thanksgiving dinner. Long before there were turkeys in, in Europe, there were geese. <laughs> and peacocks, would you believe? And the poor Europeans had not discovered the United States yet. They don't, didn't know what a turkey dinner was. But they sure knew what peacock dinners were. And they sure knew what goose dinners were. Goose, incidentally, are real greasy. And you've got to cook the, the grease out of them. But can you imagine being at a Thanksgiving dinner and say, well, I don't think I'll have any turkey and, and potatoes and gravy today. I think I'll just have vegetables. Many Christians are living on vegetables. Jesus wants us to experience not only life, but absolutely abundant life. And it's right there. But every day you got to really, really, really want it. And the blessing of that abundant life is not only will you be born again, but you'll start experiencing heaven on earth, literally, and overflowing peace that passes understanding, which will radiate to everyone around you. Amen.